Trading between Uganda and the Southern Sudan has been a complicated affair, with Ugandans accusing the Juba authorities of harassment and exploitation. Today, we are very happy to declare this arbitration committee launched. That shows that at least the future is brighter for the business community. Ugandans accused South Sudan counterparts of non-payment for goods and supplies, confiscating of goods among other sorts of harassment, resulting into untold losses. I lost my goods. I was injured. Some really in a fix, in a way that I can. I, I'm, I'm made invalid. I can't. I can't support myself. I'm demanding 65, 64. $1,500. And if he, they are not giving us all, they could at least give half of it. Chamber, they told traders at her ministry's boardroom that government is committed to improving trade at Uganda's borders as the market around our neighbors gets wider. She said that at the end of the arbitration committee's job, the two countries, Uganda and Southern Sudan, will undertake compensation to genuine claimants but not to full recovery. What, have, what has the government decided to construct 17 cross-border markets, modern markets? And we are starting with Bibia, which has already offers, uh, Moro has already offered us land, and we thank Amoro for that. So they already advertised, and construction is commencing within a month or two. Kasmo Mal, the chairman of the new committee, is also head of the Uganda Shippers Council and the renowned businessman who is widely expected to steer the arbitration to its challenges. One of the issues that will be very difficult to assess is whether the individual is honest or is not honest. That is a big challenge. But we believe that uh, the committee we have and the board that I have on that committee is competent enough to be able to assess. Of course, common sense will have to prevail in almost all cases. President Yori Museveni had earlier promised a 50 million shillings compensation fund, but he is yet to deliver the pledge according to Kampala City Traders Association publicist Isa Sekito. The South Sudan government also paid up to $3 million, but this never reached all the victims, breeding more trouble. For NBS Business, I'm Grace Navidika and Priscilla Kisache.